Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 9 for July the 28th, 2019. We're still in Unit 2 entitled A Heartfelt Covenant. And our topic for today, uh, taken from our adult quarterly, is the pursuit of truth. Our devotion reading is taken from uh, the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verses 16 through 26. Our background scripture uh, comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 7, verses 1 through 6, and uh, verses 15 through 23. And that is also our print passage today, uh, the uh, chapter 7, uh, verses 1 through 6, and then verses 15 uh, through 23 will be our lesson today. Our key verse reads, Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. And that is taken from Matthew chapter 7 verses 15 and 16a uh, from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to understand judgment and discernment and distinguish between the two. Second aim is to reflect on the consequences of practicing discernment rather than judgment. And then thirdly, uh, to model discernment rather than judging. We have three outlines today that are part of our Sunday School lesson. The first outline is entitled, Don't Be a Hypocrite. Our second outline is entitled, Watch Out for False Prophets. And then our third outline is entitled, who's real and so we certainly thank and praise God for the privilege of being able to share God's Word with you uh, our Sunday School lesson with you as we have undertaken to um, uh, study uh, the Sermon on the Mount um, taken from uh, Matthew chapter 5 uh, through chapter 7 and we have been looking at various aspects um, of Jesus teaching we want to share that with you today and we pray that you will grab a Bible uh, we're going to provide um, several scriptures that will help us to understand uh, what Jesus has been teaching uh, it should be noted uh, that uh, from the fifth chapter of the book of Matthew as we began uh, lesson series uh, talking about the Beatitudes um, as we focus on um, uh, Jesus principles and uh, uh, that he was teaching those who would be citizens uh, even heirs of the kingdom of our God so uh, today uh, we will be focusing on um, heirs of the kingdom and um, judging, uh, critical judging if you will, and also heirs of the kingdom are warned against false teachers. And so we want to make mention of the fact that uh, our biblical context uh, for this lesson highlights uh, false prophets and teachers. Um, and uh, these are persons who uh, misrepresent themselves as God's spokesmen and uh, those uh, whose teachings cannot be depended on because they have no basis in reality. Uh, also we are recognizing uh, hypocrites as a part of our lesson today. A hypocrite is a person who pretends to have virtues, uh, moral or religious beliefs, principles uh, that he or she does not actually possess, especially a person who's um, uh, actions belie stated beliefs and also we're going to be looking at uh, dogs and pigs as a part of our lesson today uh, and we want to be able to understand uh, the symbolism of uh, Jesus uh, use of these words uh, in his teaching 
um, but they uh, uh, refer to various aspects uh, of people in society um, and there's also some reference uh, as to uh, the dietary practices of Jews who um, shied away from um, uh, consuming pig or pork if you will but we want to we will lift those as we go along uh, a little bit later in, in our lesson uh, so we can have some better understanding why it's critical um, um, that that uh, Jesus used these type of uh, examples and symbols if you will to highlight uh, his principles and teaching I would also mention uh, as a part of this lesson as I looked at the Sermon on the Mount as a whole um, I was able to discover that uh, what Jesus is doing with the hearers uh, he's arming them and we want to make sure we understand there was uh, a part of Jesus sermon even as we focus on today these individuals had already been misled uh, they had been subject to uh, uh, misrepresentation, if you will, of the Mosaic Law. Um, they had been uh, teaching the wrong intent, if you will, of the Mosaic Law. And so uh, Jesus had to correct these things. And so he is arming them uh, with the truth of God's word. And, and that's very important as we look at this lesson today because we are in pursuit as our um, uh, lesson title uh, uh, helps us to understand we're in pursuit of the truth. Uh, and so we have to be armed with God's word so we can be able to discern uh, uh, who's talking to us and, we, and make some decisions about uh, doctrine if you will because it's, it sets the stage of the pattern uh, for our lives and so we want to begin uh, with this first outline uh, entitled don't be a hypocrite and this is taken from uh, Matthew chapter 7 uh, verse verses 1 through 6 and I want to read this from the NIV translation the Bible says do not judge Jesus is talking here or you too will be judged for in the same way you judge others you will be judged and with the measure you use it will be measured to you why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye verse 4 how can you say to your brother let me take the speck out of your brother out of your eye when uh, all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Verse 6, do not give dogs what is sacred and do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they will trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces couple of points I want to make about this uh, uh, about Matthew's gospel we should be uh, uh, understanding uh, the fact that this is a Jewish gospel it is directed to uh, Jews Matthew understood the Old Testament if you will and he used the Old Testament as his theology um, but this particular passage here this chapter 7 um, and uh, particularly verse 1 has probably been one of the most misinterpreted um, 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 parts of scripture or passages if you will because we are looking at this in terms of uh, uh, our own intellect and we're not uh, digging deeper to see uh, that Jesus is not uh, saying um, that we can't judge but he has uh, intentions of teaching how to judge uh, and so uh, the commentary talks about uh, some church folks misinterpret uh, they take the verse to mean that Jesus does not want us to judge people at all but that is not what Jesus meant he is referring to people who are nitpicky 
Um, so Jesus explained this more in verses 3 through 5. But I want to lift something for us as we talk about this type of judging. Uh, um, we are talking about condemning. Uh, we're talking about uh, Jesus prohibits this kind of uh, uh, judging or condemning, if you will, but approves a different kind. So uh, condemning others for their faults is failure to exercise forgiveness. I want you to look at Matthew chapter 6 verses 14 and 15. And so only a gentle and humble criticism uh, that first recognizes one's greater faults can help. There's also a, a necessary uh, discerning kind of judgment that does not condemn but distinguishes unbelief from belief. And I hope that you're able to understand the context of what Jesus is teaching here. Uh, keep in mind, as we said earlier, these individuals have already uh, had a dose, if you will, of, of, of misinterpretation uh, of the law. But I want you to see here uh, that Jesus wants us to uh, know how to handle people, uh, how to uh, discern, how to look at matters without condemning them, quote unquote, or condemning individuals. And so uh, we also have to look at ourselves as we look at others. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's like I'm uh, sharing or teaching now uh, 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 from the Bible, but I cannot convey uh, a passage of scripture or any teachings uh, upon you without looking at myself. The scriptures are, are are focusing on me uh, uh, because I am the one speaking. So am I saying something to you that I'm not adhering to myself? That would make me uh, hypocritical, if you will. And so this is the kind of thing that Jesus is teaching here. But uh, in verses 3 through 5, Jesus expounded upon his intro introductory words that are seen in um, uh, in the verse so he to ensure his listeners appreciated the gravity of his teaching so uh, Jesus sometimes uses hyperbole or extreme exaggeration uh, to help us understand the points that he is trying to make and how we deal with people uh, we need to know how and we're going to look at this a little bit later and we know that Jesus is, is not telling us that we can't discern a matter uh, because we have to discern uh, or we are being told, if you will, in our second outline to watch out for false prophets. So we have to be able to use uh, a righteous judgment, if you will, uh, without uh, a condemnation. And sometimes uh, uh, if, if the Spirit of the Lord is not talking to us, we're not uh, uh, un we're not able to understand the motives of of individuals, and that's the the uh, sort of the undercurrents of passing judgment sometimes because we don't know what the motives are. Uh, we're not able to see uh, 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 all the aspects of individuals and and what's happening, and so. But Jesus is saying here in verse five, he's calling, he's saying, hypocrite. He says, first take out or take the plank out of your own eyes. In other words, look at yourself first. Let your criticism be uh, self-reflective. Uh, be able to internalize what God is saying to you before you begin to look at other people. So we don't want to uh, 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 cast a negative light on others without looking at ourselves. And that's what makes us uh, hypocritical but he says first take the plank out of your own eye look at yourself uh, critique you and then you will be able to see others or the speck from your brother's eye so he doesn't say we can't he says how to and then verse 6 uh, uh, we're going to unpack that uh, for you it says do not give uh, dogs what is sacred or what is holy in one translation do not throw your pearls to pigs if you do they will 
trample them under under their feet and turn and tear you uh, into pieces. So uh, what is holy? Um, a reference to these evidences of the kingdom such as the healings uh, uh, which may explain why Jesus did no miracles for unbelievers but what is holy would also include the preaching of the kingdom so believers should not continue to preach to people who have rejected uh, the gospel uh, with contempt and scorn I want you to look at uh, Matthew chapter 10 verses uh, verse 14 and also Matthew chapter 15 verse 14 and so the book of Acts also illustrates the principle in practice that we're speaking about and we can see that in Acts chapter 15 verses 44 through 51 Acts chapter 15 uh, uh, I'm sorry uh, Acts chapter 18 verse 5 and verse 6 and then Acts chapter 28 verses 17 through 28 so we need to uh, take a look at uh, all of these passages and 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 take them uh, uh, into account as we uh, uh, look at these different individuals. But uh, the the dogs and the pigs, this this type of hyperbole uh, symbolizes unregenerate uh, externalists, and so uh, uh, we have to be careful. Uh, about that because uh, uh, sometimes individuals will not adhere to the principles uh, uh, particularly as we talk about this Jewish gospel if you look at the at the Pharisees and the scribes Jesus talks about them in the fifth chapter of the book of Matthew he, he says uh, in his sermon except your righteousness exceeds that of the of the Pharisees and the scribes you will in no wise enter uh, the kingdom of heaven and so the the scribes and and the Pharisees were unregenerate individuals if you will they were uh, 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 these type of individuals that did not internalize they were uh, more concerned with outer appearances than internal uh, um, principles and so this is why Jesus is saying in this sermon here that their righteousness their right standing with God needs to be better or higher or greater or exceed that of these external unregenerate individuals and so uh, they they didn't appreciate the scribes and the Pharisees who Jesus was they didn't ascribe to his teachings and so um, they were the type of antagonist that uh, followed Jesus around always questioning him and finding fault with what he did without recognizing that he came to the house of Israel for the uh, 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 sole purpose of bringing salvation and sometimes uh, we see individuals like that who uh, want to look like a Christian but they don't want to be a Christian they want to have all of the outer appearances uh, uh, that are associated with those who are uh, 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 participating or attending in the house of the Lord but they never want to come to the altar they never want to sacrifice themselves they never want to give their lives to Christ so I hope you can understand this type of hyperbole here that Jesus is using here um, uh, and so we can understand that this comprehensive type of teaching here would help these hearers in every area of their lives and, and one of the most important parts of our lives that we appreciate is relationships how we conduct them how we are engaging and and what are we bringing along with us and or, or what are we leaving uh, in terms of uh, 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 bringing things or people into our circles so we do have to make some decisions we do have to make some determinations and we're going to give you some scripture a little bit later on to help unpack these things uh, as a whole so we won't just isolate this one verse in, in Matthew chapter 7 verse 1 as it says don't judge and then we say well uh, we can't or we will be judged if we if, if, if we say something or if we make a determination so in this context again we're talking about 
uh, condemnation. I want you to keep that in mind. But the question is asked here in the quarterly, consider verses 1 through 6. How does Jesus expect us to handle our relationships with others? So uh, 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 the easy answer would be with discernment. Uh, this is a gift that God has given us that we uh, see in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I believe verse 10. And we also have to handle our relationships with forgiveness. Uh, and this is why we don't want to uh, 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 be so critical, if you will, or condemning, if you will, without understanding uh, that Christ is the greatest uh, 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 forgiver that we understand, that we, uh, that we know. This is how we uh, come to be saved is because we have been. We have been forgiven. Uh, Christ took us on in spite of what we were and what we were doing and who we were and how we conducted ourselves. He forgave us of all of our transgressions. So we have to temper our discernment and our judgment with these types of things. Uh, and, and one of the things it, it, before we move on to the second outline that I hope that we will look at when we're looking at people is is what they profess, who they are. Are they Christians? Do they know the Lord uh, or not? And so if we understand, are we able to discern that they do not confess Jesus as Lord and Savior, that they don't know Christ in the pardon of our sins, we should pray and ask God to have mercy upon them, to pity that situation. We know what it's like. So, uh, we know where we came from. And so we have to see other people uh, in light of how God has seen us and how he has brought us out with a mighty in and outstretched arm. I hope you can understand that. Uh, but our second outline is entitled, Watch Out for False Prophets. This is taken from uh, Matthew chapter 7, uh, verses 15 uh, through 20. And again from the NIV translation, uh, the Bible says, Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes? from thorn bushes or figs from thistles like likewise every good tree bears good fruit but a bad tree bears bad fruit verse 18 a good tree cannot bear bad fruit and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit verse 19 every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire thus by their fruit you will recognize them I, I was thinking about this and in, in, in certainly in in Israel's culture but even in our culture today uh, there's just a myriad of, of teachers and preachers and prophets and and the like that that we have to try to make a determination about who these individuals are and where their messaging is coming from uh, and so this gift that 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 we're talking about uh, judging or condemning versus discernment uh, Jesus is teaching how this gift works this gift does not uh, quote unquote calls for us to say anything but it calls for us to see something it does not call for us to get into a heated discussion per se, but it calls for us to discern or to be able to look at the differences uh, that should be there uh, versus those that are not. We should be able to look at an individual's life. You know, I was thinking about Christ uh, in his crucifixion. Do you know that was done publicly? everybody could see it and I'm saying that to you because we are in the public's eye uh, as people of God we are seen we are in the world but we are not of the world the world can clearly see who we are and represent and who we represent without even saying a word to us so this is what Jesus is saying here be careful watch out for these individuals because they are out here um, and he says by their fruit 
uh, what are they producing that is uh, 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 of a, uh, a measure that someone can grow by uh, or somebody can uh, be nurtured by? What fruit uh, uh, do these individuals bring to the table? Are they people that know how to bring individuals together through the gospel or do we uh, uh, scatter the flock? Are these individuals living in a way that they are, have interpreted God's word in a way that uh, they understand the character of God, which is holy, versus someone who does not understand? So we have to use the Bible uh, and what the Bible is telling us to do. And Jesus is saying here, uh, by their fruit you will recognize them so when you recognize when you discern that this individual is not of God then you can make adjustments uh, for yourselves and for your family members you can adjust uh, so to safeguard your hearing uh, to safeguard your faith uh, and so uh, I can tell you and I have been talking about this for some time uh, but uh, I have in over the course of my Christian life, I've had my faith upset. And so when your faith is upset by teachings and by doctrines of others who have been able to uh, 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 master things in a way, how do you get that back on track? And so these principles that Jesus is arming these listeners to, they'll be able to go forward in a way that they can safeguard their faith, that they can safeguard their growth, that they can safeguard their very lives, uh, if you will. The, the sake of our soul uh, uh, is at stake. Uh, uh, and so these uh, false prophets, if you will, uh, they don't something that's ferocious something that is devouring has no remorse about what it sees or what it does it doesn't have any feelings about how many lives it ruins uh, it doesn't have any remorse about uh, 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 how low and and how far scattered you get from the Word of God they are just about themselves they are taking advantage of our ignorance they're taking advantage of what we say and are sometimes proud to say that I didn't know well people will take advantage of what you don't know so this is why uh, Jesus is telling uh, his hearers here just look at what they do look at what they say pay attention the first epistle of John chapter 4 he says beloved believe not every spirit but test the spirits to see if they are of God so we have to pay attention we have to listen we have to follow I asked you all early on when I engaged in this lesson to get your Bible why did I do that why did I say that because I want you to follow me I want you to look at the same thing that I'm looking at and I want you to be able to see where I'm coming from so I don't just give you a bunch of things that I think are in the Bible I'm giving you the scripture I'm telling you exactly where I'm coming from so you can follow along with me so these are the kinds of things that help us to discern uh, uh, who is of God and who was who is of not who is not of God so uh, we cover these warnings here so uh, even before the advent of Jesus uh, the first coming false prophets and teachers had plagued God's chosen people so Moses had warned them uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 13 verses 1 through 5 and also Deuteronomy chapter 18 uh, verses 14 through 22 so Jesus knew that once he ascended back into heaven another round of false prophets and teachers would buffet the church you know this is something that the Apostle Paul was concerned about I believe in Acts chapter 20 uh, when he met with the uh, Ephesian elders on his way back to Jerusalem 
uh, Paul was concerned and and this is the thing about leadership this is the thing about good leadership it is concerned about the faith of individuals it is concerned about God's people and what and the things that if you look at the uh, 20th chapter of Acts and you read uh, its entirety what Paul is saying to these elders he's talking about and warning them and admonishing them to take care of the flock take care take care of of God's people and so in that context in that passage Paul called these false teachers wolves savage wolves they're gonna come in and he specifically says they won't spare the flock they're gonna take advantage and so Paul warns them and he reminds that he was innocent uh, he didn't have any uh, men's blood on his hands in other words he told men the truth and so he just warned them take care of God's people but these individuals are out here they have always been out here uh, they will continue to be out here offering an alternative or anti message to 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 Christ uh, anti a uh, 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 character anti adherence anti obedience to the teachings of Christ so we have to be careful and we have to know God's word in context so we are able to discern these individuals when they come because they look like people of God they look like preachers they look like uh, 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 that they know God they're educated they're well educated they they are masters in speech they are dressed nice they smell very good all of this kinds of stuff they drive nice vehicles they live in in nice homes but they are wolves in sheep clothing and they are taking advantage of God's people uh, and some of them, uh, 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 I, I, I say with, with a broken heart that it's hard sometimes for people to get back on track when they have been taken advantage of. So we want to keep these things in mind. Jesus is teaching these things. Jesus is preaching about these things. Jesus is arming his listeners to safeguard their faith and themselves from these false teachers but the question is asked what are some guidelines uh, the scripture give us for discerning false teaching false prophets and false motives so I, I, I gave you uh, some scripture to look at but I wrote down here uh, things not coming to pass people are are preaching about things coming to pass and they don't that's referenced back over in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 18 their fruit or their lifestyle uh, who they confess as Lord and Savior we need to pay attention to these things because these are the types of things that 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 uh, uh, people are doing uh, they can pray in God's name but they don't reference Jesus Christ they don't ever confess that he is their Lord and their savior so we have to watch out and pay attention to these things and also we highlighted do they provide context for their teaching I specifically said earlier that this was a Jewish gospel I wanted you to know where the background of this book comes from and how Matthew sought to use the Old Testament uh, it was not something that he threw away but he understood the program that God had for Israel so he went and got the Old Testament or he used the Old Testament as his theology so I wanted you to know that so that is the proper context for what we are using uh, and what we are sharing with you today is the origin uh, the who the what the when the where the date all of these things uh, 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 in a hermeneutical way will help us to understand um, what we should be paying attention to in terms of scripture and so our last outline is entitled who's real this is taken from Matthew chapter 7 verses 21 through 23 and again from the uh, NIV translation the Bible says 
Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Verse 22. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? Verse 23. Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. Everything external, but never came into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Let me help you understand this today. You might believe that you are part of a great church, a big church. That's fine. You may have a great pastor. That's fine. You may be doing all sorts of things in the house of the Lord as sacrifices, singing in the choir, preaching the gospel, uh, being on the usher board, whatever it is. Those are fine. But the, the central question that Jesus is dealing with here is that the individuals that are saying, Lord, Lord, never knew him never gave their lives to Christ, were never born again. And so we have to be careful about uh, uh, our the things that we do, which we should do uh, uh, in the house of the Lord. But they are not salvation. Salvation, it comes only through faith in Jesus Christ. It comes through the cross it comes through the finished work of Jesus Christ. It comes through the blood. It comes through the Holy Ghost. It comes through the resurrection. It comes through as a person who heard the gospel, believed the gospel, called on the name of the Lord, and then subsequently they were saved. This is a process by which we come to know Jesus in the pardon of our sins. So Jesus is saying here very clearly, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter. That is a sad commentary because these are some of the outer things that are uh, uh, expressions that we use, uh, that we say uh, he's this and he's that in my life, but you never have come to know him. So as I'm sharing with this with you, I also have to look at my relationship am I in a relationship with Jesus Christ so this poses a mirror for me as I share it with you and so we want to make sure that we are not in this category who have uh, had all of these external uh, manifestations that we uh, may know the Lord but never internalized it never uh, for Jesus to say plainly that he never knew you means that you were never in a relationship with him. You never came to know him as Lord and Savior. Certainly he knows you. Certainly he knows who you are, but you never became acquainted with him through the word of God. And so many of us today, we are going all around the church and we're going all around the world and we're going all around or outside of the gospel and that is a mistake we have to come Jesus specifically says in John 14 he said I am the way the truth and the life no man comes to the Father but through or but by me so it's, it's very important that we understand that that we're not just saying he's our Lord and Savior that we are just attending uh, uh, the local church but we have come to the altar and we have sacrificed ourselves Romans chapter 12 uh, verses 1 and 2 Paul says I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God which is your reasonable service so this is how it is done. We sacrifice. We present ourselves uh, to God. I hope you can understand that. So, But the commentary here just helps us or underscores 
uh, that uh, these false prophets will follow their own paths ignoring God's will. For example there are denominations today that ignore Jesus divinity uh, that clearly is not in keeping with God's will. Yes these false prophets and teachers will perform what will seem to be miraculous works. You could look at Ex Exodus chapter 7 uh, verses 8 through 13 but on the day of judgment these charlatans will uh, protest loudly that they had in fact been doing God's will. Uh, they will use their illicit works as their evidence and we see this happen a lot of time. Uh, we, 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 we try to market the things that we do uh, and we pat ourselves on the back that we've been in the church for 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years. We've been on all of these different boards and uh, we gave money and all of that. None of these things is salvation. Your good works is what you should be doing. They were never intended to save you. They were intended to demonstrate God's glory or being manifested through your life that you sought to do or to serve. But it by no means saves us. We must understand this today. And so, uh, but here on, the, on that day, Jesus will not only den deny the efficacy of their works, but he will also say that he does not even uh, know them. Of course, Jesus as Son of God knows who they are. Uh, he will not identify their work because it was not sanctioned by the Holy Spirit. In the end, they will be condemned to eternal damnation. That is as clear as it gets. So, uh, I admonish all of us today, uh, as God provides opportunity and life and health and strength out of your own mouth you must confess him as Lord and Savior Romans chapter 10 uh, verse 8 9 and 10 is specific uh, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead the Bible says you shall be saved you have to confess him. You have to uh, 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 get into this relationship with him. And it is all through faith. By no uh, works of the flesh shall a man be justified. No works. I don't care how great it is. How magnificent it is. Even in the sight of others. But we must come to know Jesus in the pardon of our sins and this lesson today arms these hearers with some very vital information going forward not just for who's talking to them but it gives them an opportunity to look at themselves and to see where they are in the body of Christ to see where they are in terms of God's word are we saved and if we are saved make sure that you are saved according to the scriptures it's what God says. It's how he says come that we need to come. It's how he says uh, that he's looking for a, a, a church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. It's what he says that he's looking for. That, that, that we should study to show ourselves approved workmen unto God that need not be ashamed but rightly dividing the word of truth. So it's what God says. But just a, a, a final note on um, as we look at this final question here. Uh, what are some situations in which believers need to use discernment? And how can we be sure that we are discerning and not judging? So again in this context we're talking about condemning. Uh, and we're also discerning. It is a gift that is given by God that we might know the difference. Uh, between good and evil you have every right as a believer to discern uh, all things and I'm going to give you 1st Corinthians chapter 2 uh, verse 7 through 16 so we hope trust and pray that we've given you some food for thought that we've given you some scriptures that you can study at your leisure that we can see these this this sermon and how powerful it is 
in terms of Jesus arming his hearers of things that they need to pay attention to uh, in their lives. So this closing prayer, precious Lord, help us see the beauty of your love for us and for your world. Help us to see the world's need for the message of your grace through Jesus Christ. We rededicate our lives to you today as expressions of our sincere desire to worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So it's again until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again. We say God bless you.